Hi guys! Okay, so as you can tell, I'm making all these videos at once. I just realized that I'm sitting on two chairs. I swear my butt's really not that big. But, um, yeah. In fact, let's fix this. Okay. I had two chairs here because Apollo was sitting next to me. And then I was out of frame, so I scooted over. Whatever. Okay. So, I'm all caught up. <laughs> Yay! Who thought it would happen? September 20th through, or through 26th. The topic is male infertility. And the questions are, what is it? What causes it? How is it diagnosed? Uh, how was it treated? Yes. There's lots and lots of questions, so I'm going to try to bang this one out real quick. First of all, um, in the trying to conceive community, it seems like uh, male factor infertility is like the dirty little secret that no one talks about. However, I do want to keep in mind that um, out of all infertile couples, it's about 10% of couples are going to be infertile, right? And of those infertile couples, 40% have female factor infertility, 40% have male factor infertility, and 20% have both. So that means that 60% of couples have male factor infertility as at least one component or one reason of their infertility issues. That's a lot. And uh, we really should be giving it more discussion than we are. Hey, boys. Boys. That needs to stop. Speaking of boys. <laughs> There's a big size difference in them, but they are both spunky. And they got a squeaky toy. This is going to be great. Okay. Hi. The drama. I had to kick them outside. Now they're looking at me like, what do we do? According to the University of Maryland, 90% of male infertility is due to issues with the sperm, which falls into the following three categories. Low count, poor motility, or abnormal morphology. Now sperm abnormalities can be the cause uh, can be caused by a range of factors, including congenital birth defects, disease, chemical exposure, and lifestyle habits. Uh, and in many cases, the causes of the abnormalities are unknown. So the remaining cases of male infertility, the other 10%, um, they're usually caused by anatomical problems, hormone imbalances, and genetic defects. So how is it diagnosed? Um, I recommend anybody that's trying to conceive, if they're working with a specialist, if they're at the point where they're um, starting to take Clomid, you need to have a semen analysis done because, like I've said before, you can't treat the problem unless you know what the problem is. Um, so we need to rule out male factor infertility, which is why you need to have the semen analysis done. I know a lot of husbands are scared about going into a lab and ejaculating into a cup. It's all weird and scary, but... Um, it's no more weird for us to get up on a table and be naked from the waist down and have some stranger stick a speculum inside us. So, <laughs> um, the guys need to man up and they need to do a semen analysis. So, make them do it. Um, other ways, other additional tests that you can have done, especially if, if the semen analysis shows that there's some issues, uh, you might want to consider having a post-ejaculatory uh, urine sample. So this could be done if he's doing his second semen analysis and then right after he ejaculates having a, a urine sample taken. Um, this sh uh, shows that there is retrograde ejaculation and it can also be used to test for infections. So that's good. Um, you might also look into having some blood tests done. This will um, look at hormone levels and it can also show infections such as HIV, hepatitis, and chlamydia. Um, sometimes there's a physical reason, and um, those can be looked at better by ultrasound. So you can have an ultrasound done, usually of a scrotum, um, to look for cysts or tumors, um, abnormal blood flow, or varicoceles that are too small for physical detection. Uh, varicoceles, I don't really know what they are, but apparently you can test for them with a physical examination, and it feels like he has a scrotum full of worms. I don't know. Um, and it can also, the ultrasound can also show testicular cancer. Okay, so how can your semen analysis results be improved? Um, most of the time we have little control over them, but there are some lifestyle changes that you might want to think about implementing. Um, avoid cigarettes or any drugs that can affect sperm count or reduce sexual function. 
Um, if your husband is overweight, he should try to lose weight because <laughs> um, obesity can be associated with fertility, infertility. Um, <laughs> he needs to sleep more and exercise moderately but regularly because excessive exercise can impair fertility. Um, stress can contribute to reduce, reduce sperm quality. And then it says it is not known if stress reduction techniques can improve fertility, but they may help couples endure the difficult process involved in fertility treatments. This is all from the University of Maryland. Um, and then also, all those studies now indicate that tight underwear and pants pose no threat to male fertility. There's no harm in wearing looser clothing. So um, swap out the tidy whities for boxers. And then to prevent overheating of the testes, men should avoid hot baths, showers, and steam rooms, and hot tubs. Um, and then you should avoid, avoid using lubricants, um, astroglide, KY jelly, because those affect sperm motility. He should take a multi uh, daily multivitamin with lots of zinc, and you should change the frequency of intercourse during your fertile window to every other day to give him a day of rest. Okay, so... If you've had your basic semen analysis done and it shows that there's an issue, especially with morphology, what I would suggest um, is what Turtle Ames had done. Um, have a TZI analysis done that breaks down the different defects and gives you a count and percentage showing you um, what areas of morphology are a problem. It's hard to explain, but um, the four areas are head defects, neck and mid-piece defects, tail defects, and um, cytoplasmic droplets. Cytoplasmic droplets are just these little residue thing that's on their tail and then they can't swim right. Okay, so in a TZI analysis done, they take out 200 sperm and then what they do is they count how many abnormal sperm there are and how many normal sperm there are, okay? And then they go through and they count up how many of the individual defects there are on those abnormal sperm. So let's say you have um, 200 sperm, 100 are abnormal, 100 are normal. So then on those 100 abnormal, you're going to count out how many head defects, how many neck defects, how many tails, and how many droplet defects, okay? Then you're going to add up the head, neck, and tail, not the droplets, and that's going to give you some number. We're going to call it X, okay? So then you take X number of defects divided by 100 abnormal sperm, and that's going to give you your TZI number, okay? Okay, so I just wanted to verify my numbers before I start talking more. Um, <laughs> throw that. Okay. So, when you get your semen analysis numbers done, um, if they're not looking so good, you want to keep some numbers in mind. Um, for IUI, interuterine insemination, your morphology, morphology should be 14% uh, or higher. So if it's below 14%, then most likely you're going to have to look at IVF. Now, as far as IVF goes, that TZI calculation I was telling you about. Let's go over that again. Um, the TZI is the total number of head, neck, and tail defects added together and divided by the number of abnormal sperm. So it should be like anywhere between 1.0 and 3.0. Yes. Um, it basically just tells us the average number of defects that um, an abnormal sperm has. So it just tells us kind of like how sick the abnormal sperm are. Um, if your TZI is less than 1.7, so the, the average abnormal sperm has um, like 1.7 defects or less, then you can have IVF without using ICSI. And if the average abnormal sperm or your TZI score is greater than 1.9, so he has like two defects plus, you know, um, then you're going to be looking at IVF with ICSI. So those are just some things to keep in mind. Um, just like female 
factor in fertility. There's lots of different causes and not necessarily um, a magic pill that's going to cure it all. But we just have to work, realize how to work with it and uh, deal with it and make a baby. All right. If you have any more specific questions, feel free to uh, message Five Waiting Wombs. And if you have any questions about semen analysis results or calculating your TZI, anything like that, feel free to um, either private message me or email me at bubblelush at gmail.com. Bye, everyone.